What's up, guys? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Morning Show for October 10th, 2017. Nick, you celebrating today? I typed, morning show is live now. Come hang out with me and Tim at, at Tim Gettys. We love you. And then I typed in love, and it's this cool gif of... You're my boo. You're my boo. It's Halloween. With a ghost. Yeah, I enjoyed and that. I'm going to tweet that out. You ruined my joke, so I'm going to do it again. Do it again. Nick, are you celebrating today? Am I celebrating today? Yeah, because... Oh, it's not there yet. What? It is you there. hover over the number, oh. it's not quite 69. It says 69. Yeah. So, but, but it's, it's like still, 68, 9, 6, It's six. over the 5. So that's my so question to you. You are, you are the master of all mm-hmm. things internet. That's right? what matters. It's you are the master. It's all what people think. Can I celebrate today? Yeah, you can celebrate. I was, the joke I was going to say, because you're a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Because the date today is 10, 10. But, you know, now it doesn't make it doesn't roll off the tongue as I much as it, it would have. But use that joke on one of your loved ones, and they'll maybe get a kick out of it. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll be like, hey, stop. You see, well, I didn't know what you were doing, because sometimes you know how Greg's like, how early? And I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know. And he's like, exactly. Like, and kinda, exactly. I didn't know if you were pulling yeah. a Greg yeah, 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 on me. Yeah, like, no, no, no. Was, am I supposed to know what the joke is? No. Or... This is the Kind of Funny Morning Show. Each and every weekday morning, we get together right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to talk about all the things we want to talk about. Usually it's nerd shit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's non-nerd shit. But whatever it is, it's going to be a good time. You can get it on youtube.com slash kindoffunnylater as a VOD, or you can get it on podcast services around the globe, including iTunes and SoundCloud and podcasts. Boom. All of them. All of them. All of them. Everything. Mm-hmm. Anywhere that there's an audio or visual medium. We like to cram our content into that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know I also I mean? like that once again, we're matchy matchy. I, yeah, here's the thing. I put this shirt on this morning and the first thing I thought was, I bet Tim's gonna wear Someone's this shirt Someone's gonna today. wear this shirt The today. first thought was, I bet Tim's gonna wear it. Mm-hmm. The second ch- thought was, no, Kevin's out of t- country. Yeah. Otherwise, he would for sure be the one. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And then I was like, maybe Andy might wear, it, but I think Andy wore it like last week, and he can't possibly do laundry that much. Uh huh. So I'm like, Tim's gonna be the guy I walk in today. Sure as shit. Now what we need to do is get. We need to do the joke next time where our, our laptops are slightly elevated, and, and then, then we both re- close them at the do same the time. Reveal? We're like, hey, oh, did like you it. know this shirt is, is available? It's almost on our store. Well, that's, that's the thing. We don't know when it's yeah. happening. So right now I'm thinking this is like a pre-order hype. Sure. Thing. You know what As I mean? Well, we're we're good marketers. That's what it we're is. We're very good marketers. <laughs> we're such good marketers, we don't even know we're marketing to you until it happens. Yeah. Until is, you feel it. It's very until true. Until you feel it. Uh, I'm going to Hooters tonight for dinner. Oh, because my friends decided. Envious of you. Really? Can I come? Oh, you do like Hooters a lot. I do not like Hooters. I love Hooters, and I'll it's, tell you why. Not because of the, 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 the wait staff or the gimmick. That might be my favorite part of it. They got the best. Fried pickle chips on the planet. I see, like, fried pickles, man. I just can't do it. You all, you're always about these fried pickles. They've There's taken too much fried, not chip. enough pickle. They've taken a chip, and they've infused the pickle in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And it's a genius. They're innovators. And to be fair, I used to hate Hooters wings, but they've gotten better over the years. Even Greg will they're, they're acknowledge wings are okay. that. They're okay. They're okay. They're okay. They're not great. They're okay. Yeah. And I just think it's hilarious. It's it's like going to Hooters is like going to a strip club. We're like, you just kind of, it's fun to watch other people there, mm-hmm. like how into it they are. And yeah. you're like, that's just, this is, there's this something is weird sad. about it. But hey, this also, is a sad, weird reality. Shout out sexuality, man. I, I don't like these people that are like, oh, I go there for the wings. No, you don't. You if don't you go go in there for the wings, you'd go to fucking you wing to go, wings. Yeah, you just go to Buffalo Wild Wings if you just wanted the wings. Like, just own it. service. Just own it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Shout out to Buffalo service. Wild Wings. God bless your wings, but. Man, Fuck, you gotta figure some shit out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's let's get right to what everybody wants to know, which is the housekeeping. Let's get it out of the I way really quick. Uh, the Team Fat Apron is the fan mail tier for Patreon users on patreon.com slash kind of funny. You can get it and then you can look like Greg if you so please. Um, then the next thing is, we already went over this, but Nick is getting very close. Very to close. 69,000. It even says, says 69,000. But you hover over it. Hover you know, over Greg? Because you know I can't break rules. There you go. I We're am, so close. I'm so close. 33 it. away. I'm so close to it. 33 right. users away. Um, I think I'm go- I'm conservatively just going to change my uh, profile picture to two people like this. Mm-hmm. You think that would be appropriate, or yeah. is that maybe something to stay away from? No, I, I definitely think that's very, very good. Cool. Um, and then let's get right into the news. Uh, so here's the thing, Nick. Something mm-hmm. happened last night. Yeah. Star Wars Episode Eight: mm-hmm. The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Trailer drops, poster drops, tickets drop. A lot of updates here for you. First off, I want to look at the... Can you cl- click on the poster, Greg? So yeah, expand that image there. So have you seen this, Nick? No, but it's fucking rad. Yeah, it is pretty fucking rad. Somebody did this, like, doodle over it that it's supposed to look like Darth Vader's face. 
Yeah, so Luke, Luke's the helmet, and mm -hmm. then Ray and Kylo are the eyes, I and then it, it goes down. So I'm like, that, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. I mean, Whatever. it definitely is. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fucking right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they also, did a good job there. Also, this poster style is just so well done, man. Their posters have been awesome. They have. For the last, the last few movies. They've done, they've sure. done a great job. Uh, I also love the, the looming AT-AT, like, battle walkers in the background. Yeah, I'm fascinated. I, I saw the, I don't know, the, the Y-Wings. I don't know what those wings are down there. Well, I don't know what the fuck they're called. Um, the, the names w out wings or whatever. Um, I saw those in the trailer, and I'm like, I'm fascinated to see what that dirt is they're kicking up and why they're doing that. I think it's just the planet, because there's other shots yeah, that we just, saw in the other trailers. But they're, trailers. like, scraping up the planet. But, like, even though you see the inside of the planet in certain things, and then it's red as well. But What I love about all of this, though, mm. Is the the red motif mm -hmm. right? Of course, red, of red being red, of course, popularly being the dark Sith, side. The color for the Sith lights. Yeah, there, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very fascinated to see how this movie. Two things: one, where they go with the plot, obviously, um, but two, traditionally, obviously, the middle of Star Wars movie has been that that most the most intriguing of all because it's the second act to the trilogy, and I'm fascinated to see how dark this one's going to go. It's I hope they can go Empire. Well, so uh, just looking at this poster, just to kind of finish off just the th things people sure. have noticed, why is Poe on the dark side? Now, is it just because there's nowhere else to put him? I don't think there's anywhere else That makes sense. But Who's uh, that person right below him? Is you got Captain Ar Phasma. Oh, yeah. I mean, Grand maybe he's Tarth. A, I mean, all those people are bad guys. Yeah, so it's kind of weird. Then we got C-3PO doing something over there. C-3PO is just point. He's, he's like kind he's, of given like a... Yo, hello. yo, I'm here C3PO. for you guys. He's just giving a fucking air pump, man. Yeah. So what blows my mind, like before we even get into the trailer, because we're going in for a second, Nick, I want to let you know we have secured tickets for Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Uh, Joey and I worked very hard to do it. A little too hard, some might say. We uh, <clears throat> overdid it. Joey went. A tad. Joey went. Hey, should I start? Should we? Is what she said. Should we start thinking about? Star Wars The Last Jedi tickets. And my first instinct in my brain was, if I'm part of this process, it's going to wind up with me yelling and having to step outside. And It'll be too it frustrating. Up. And then we wouldn't see Star Wars. So I'm going to just remove myself, yep. similarly to how I removed myself from the Blade Runner mm -hmm. uh, ticket thing. And Joey did a phenomenal job on that. Great seats, by the way. Enjoyed the shit out of that movie with you. Um, so... Having said all that, wh when are we seeing this? Well, How many was, tickets did you get? Did we buy a theater? There was definitely a difference between Star Wars The Last Jedi and Blade Runner in terms of demand and options for seats. Whereas Star Blade War. Runner, we were the only ones in the theater. How dare you? Star Wars, uh, we How were kind of fucked. How dare you, uh, sir? Where we had to actually stay in a digital line to buy tickets. Yeah. Where I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. But anyways, to, to cut to the chase of this, Nick, we may or may not, and by that I mean we definitely do, have 39 tickets How did we get to Star Wars The to Last Star Wars. Jedi. Now, Here's the thing. There was a process to how we got there. They're all returnable, and okay. also we have more than enough friends that have already hit me up, that like IGN people and whatever. Oh, no, no, like, I have no oh, doubt like, that we'll do that. That I'll be able to just right. be like, here, take these fucking tickets and we'll sure. be good. Um, but the problem was, when they first went live, not all theaters and auditoriums were available. And you know me, I want the fucking best. I want IMAX. Specifically, I want 2D IMAX at the Metreon. Right. Because it's fantastic there. Beautiful. Or the XD. XDs at the Century 20. Right. Those were the two not available at all on the list. Match. So I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? But I did see that some were available. I got nine tickets, front row, in lounge reserved seating. Okay. 7 p.m. It's the best I could do. And I was like, Nick's not going to like this. I don't mm. like this. But mm. hey, it's better than fucking anything else. Joey got tickets at Century, but no, re no reserved seating, 7 p.m. That's okay. I'll and take those. Would you really? Yeah, I'll just go wait in line for two hours. You know, I'm old. All right, cool. You, you, you I, do not, I do not want to see Star Wars The Last Jedi in the front row. I can't right. do it. The, the, there's, there's, a, there's more. Okay. Then, so then I was like, I was dead set on getting fucking IMAX tickets. So I was refreshing that motherfucker just waiting for it. What I didn't realize is these motherfuckers fucked me. Eventually IMAX pops, pops up. Yeah. But Nick, you're not going to like this. I don't like this at all. 9.45 p.m. 3D. <sighs> but I was like, ugh. But I'm like, I got to get them. Like, just this is better than anything else we have. Sure. So I got them. <laughs> pretty good seats. Pretty decent seats. But I was like, ah, oh, but I still, this can be better. I was like, where's the show before this? There has to be a show before 9.40 fucking 5. Right. There was. I was an idiot. The entire time on Fandango, there was Star Wars Episode 8, and next to it, there was FanFest, the Star Wars experience. 
And I'm like, I'm just gonna click on this just to see what the fuck it was. Yeah, yeah it was the fucking first showings of the show in the pre premiere theaters. And I'm like, they, these fuckers were hiding this shit. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Bunch of tickets available, but unfortunately, they're all spread out. So I was like, I gotta do this. Now there's good news to this. Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. showing, 2D, Metreon IMAX. Yeah. We fucking in this bitch. Is the problem is, the only bad part about it is that it's the back right corner. Doesn't matter. And we don't even have a full row. It's two, 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 three. That's fine. Or whatever the math that's is. That's totally fine. So that's what we got. So just letting you know, we did our fucking due diligence and you we made this shit awesome. happen. You guys are awesome. So we have a bunch of options right now. None of them ideal. <laughs> No, but no, we no, can see Star six, Wars in a bunch of different 6 p.m. 2D IMAX. I've sat in those chairs. They're great. They're fine. We could go to the 6 p.m. IMAX 2D and then still go to the 9.45. You're right. You're right. In 3D. Fuck like it. Heads up. Back like heads to up. back. Let's go. You throw in a bag of Flamin' Hot Cheetos on top of that. You guys got yourself a fun night. I don't have any night. more Flamin' Hot Cheetos. I walked into the room yesterday and I was like, Joey and Andy, you guys are pretty cool. You're pretty cool. But you know what would make you really cool? If one of you had a bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And they agreed. They said we would be way cooler if we had a bag of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. This weekend, uh, me and Gia went to Andronico's, and she was like, we're doing a snack run. Like, we're going to stock up on oh, snacks. And I was like, all right, sure. Stuff. Bought a bunch of uh, hot Cheetos, bought okay. a bunch of goldfish. And then we get back, and she, she immediately has this fucking nervous breakdown. She's like, you need to hide these from me. And you can't just hide them where you always hide things. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, all right, but, but, like that where I normally hide things, it's not so much hiding as much as putting it out of your reach. Yeah. She's like, and she's just like, yeah, but I figured out that if I put this chair on this thing, I'm like, don't put a chair on a thing. Like that oh, is, no. that, that's too much. My wife, climbing. every once in a while, <laughs> I'll come home and she'll be balancing. I have, we have one chair and a ladder, by the way. We have a step ladder, but she never wants to use this. I bought her a fucking step ladder. Um, Oh god, there's a honey nut. Uh -uh. Um, <laughs> but she doesn't want to go get the step ladder, so she just said we have this gigantic Tupperware that she bought for all of our snow gear and like warm weather gear, mm -hmm. and it just happens to be like on the, the highest fucking shelf to the point when I when I try to get it, I have to like push it up with my with my fingers. She'll go up to get it on my swivel chair, my office swivel chair. Yeah, and she'll be like balancing Nick on it. Doesn't like that. And she'll be balancing on it. I'm like, you're gonna fall and break your neck. And then you're gonna beg me to kill you, and I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna keep you around like Hillary Swank from Million Dollar Baby, because I love you, and you know that I told you I have to die first. So she just figure it out. She just stop out. that. Well, she's a boxer in that movie, right? She was a boxer in that movie. Mm. Not my wife, Hillary Swank. Right. No. That was a weird movie. It, it was, was a weird movie. Fucking weird movie. But anyway, so now with G, I need to hide my. There needs to be hot Cheetos hidden throughout my house. Is that what she <laughs> pretended to be a guy? No, that's million. No, that, that was, was Mulan. Uh, that was Mulan. Mm. To defeat the Huns. Only lyric I know. Let's get back to back to back. I'm mm -hmm. gonna make a man out of you. Yeah. All right, so now let's get to it. Uh, we're gonna watch the Star Wars Last Jedi trailer. Now, I want everyone to keep in mind. Nick hasn't even fucking seen this what? yet. What? Because he's Pull an back. old ass man that doesn't understand how the internet works. Pull back, can you do me a favor? Yeah. When we pull this up, yeah. let's go. Um, can you just dim the lights on me a little bit? Oh, I'm gonna get moody. Can you can you get these lights off? Just I get them off, can't dim them. Turn them off, buddy. Got it. Turn them off. <laughs> Daddy needs to see this for real. And is this loud as fuck or what? Do we know? <laughs> or what? Let's go on 30 right now. Let's point this motherfucker up to 80. Got it. Maybe not 80, but. Now put up to like 50. That's good. Okay. Dim the lights! Alright. <laughs> Louder. When I found you, I saw raw. Untamed power. And beyond that, something truly special.
what up? This is not going to go the way you think. Let's bring lights back up, please. Thank you. Um, I will be... If they somehow end up teaming up and just taking over the fucking galaxy, that would be the fucking coolest <laughs> end of Star Wars yeah, as ever. Guys. As bad guys? Just like, not as bad guys, but light and dark and just fucking wreck everything and just burn everything down and start again. That would be badass. Bipartisanship? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, just like, boom, come together, like light and dark together, working together. Come together. There we go. Dun, 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 right now. now. Oh, uh, but me! I was like, who, what's a character that rhymes with me in Star Wars? Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks! Uh, and Shmi! Or the oh, mo- Shmi! Mommy Shmi! Mommy right? Shmi! Which one's Anakin Mommy Skywalker's Shmi? Mom. Anakin's mom. Yeah. R.I.P. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 We don't talk about that. Of course. Oh, oh man, I, uh, I was flipping through TV channels the other day because I still watch uh, cable. And cool. The Revenge <laughs> of the Sith was on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it can't be as bad as I remember. I remember liking Revenge of the Sith. I'm going to watch this for a little bit. Not good. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't well, do it. What's funny about Especially Revenge since of the Sith, now we've got the good that, Star Wars I think Wars that's movies. why. Revenge of the Sith I used to stand up for. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just because in relation to 1 and 2, it is so much better. Yeah. But, but compared, compared to, to 7 and, and Rogue, Rogue One. One. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sir. It's not working. Um, the, I, will, uh, I will say this. It's fascinating to see Ryan Johnson's style versus J.J. Abrams' style. Like, you can actually see it in the trailers. Yeah. Like, Ryan has a lot more of a traditional Big style. Big shots. Big a shots. Lot of wide. You're not doing the, the Steven Spielberg, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. push-ins, things like that. So it's going to be cool to see this movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. What I enjoyed most about this trailer is the use of the music. I like that the theme of this trailer is, whereas Force Awakens was definitely the familiar, Yeah. this seems to me like the difference, where... The last time, Force Awakens trailer, it's every theme we know from the fucking characters, mm-hmm. and it's familiar. In this one, it starts off with the Imperial March theme, yeah. but it never gets there. Yeah. Like, it, it keeps almost getting there, and then they play every new theme for the, the new characters. Mm-hmm. And I like that, where it's like, all right, let's go. This isn't necessarily going to be Empire Strikes Back again. Right. This is now the step away in but a different direction. But it still has that feel, that ominous tone. Like, well, that's different, is though. A to tone, be... like, people can't have it both ways. Like No, 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 I don't mean that. I just mean that's a good thing, right? Like it, it we, We're going into thing. darkness on this movie. Like, there's yeah. no, like, hey, we're going to win at the end of this. Right? We're going to blow up the big planet Death Star thing. There's a shot of Luke in the, like, in the fog, and it looks like he's wearing a black robe, but it might just be wet or dark or whatever, and it looks fucking ominous. Well, I love how Luke's kind of hell. like a, hey, man, I'm terrified of all this shit in this, like... I love that line where he's like, I'm only, I've only seen this kind of raw power once before. And, and you imagine he's like, talking about Kylo. Yeah. And then, so now he's like scared of Rey. And it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I also think that this trailer, hopefully, does a real good job with misdirection. Yeah. And there's so much cutaways well, and shots where it's like, who's talking to who? Right. And are they just fucking playing with us yeah. and whatever? Because it's like, that, the ending shot of Rey and, and Kylo is like, is that actually together? It might not. It's probably not together. Or maybe it is. I don't know. But... But um, what I like is that it seems like they're playing with the expectations here a lot, like what you're talking about, right? I like that we don't know if Luke's whole purpose was to just end everything to begin with, and Ray found him, and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't like this, right? Obviously, he's training or whatever, but what, what, it, what are his motives in this, in the mm-hmm. whole thing, right? Prior, prior to watching this trailer, I'm like, oh, he's clearly going to try to rebuild some level of the Jedi Order, but nah, it doesn't, he doesn't really want to. We had the last trailer where he's like, well, Jedi has to end, it. Yeah. right? And this trailer really looks like, you're like, what, whoa, what, like, what are his motives? What the fuck is he trying to do here? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's great, man. I, I, I'm very interested in it. I think that the... Uh, yeah, John Boyega with that badass police light stick. Fuck yeah, man. Fighting Captain the lightsaber. Phasma. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that this trailer didn't have that, like, wow factor, and I think that's a good thing, because... Oh, yeah. When we get the wow factor too much, then the movie's totally actually spoiled for you yeah. when you go in. Um, I thought the Captain Phasma, John Boyega scene was the wow factor. The the colors of that look beautiful, and I love the, their decision to make her suit that metallic 
like almost mirror like. Yeah, chrome. Uh, yeah, chrome. Super yeah. chrome. Yeah. Oh my god, it's, that's going to be visually fucking cool as and hell. Beautiful on screen. Yeah. And they, them fighting is finally going to be like something that we've been looking forward to for years now, like from the first trailer. And then she wasn't in the movie that much at all. So to actually see her do things is going to be fun. Yeah. So man, I'm, I, I'm so so damn excited. The, the one thing I want to talk to you about is the porgs. The porgs. The little penguin looking fuck. Yeah, what the shit are those things? I mean, it's this movie's Ewok, this movie's BB-8. Why do they need And that? all that stuff. Now, here's my Do they thing. not sell enough fucking BB-8s? Why do they have to shoehorn in these fucking things that kids are... I mean, kids are gonna like... Kids are like lightsabers. They're dope as shit. You don't need the stupid penguin things. I mean, it's obvious they do, because they're gonna sell a lot of toys and shit based off of it. The internet's divided on this, and by divided, I mean there's so many fucking people that are holding on really, like, way too hard with the porgs, and they're all about them. And I'm like, that's a little much. Like, they're cool and fun. But then there's other people that are like, fuck this shit. They're like, they're fucking eating unless Jar Jar. The porg, unless the porg is literally the thing that Jedis eat for their fucking force strength, I don't want, I don't need them in the story. My thing is, I'm, I'm in a different place with it, where I'm like, I think they did such a good job with BB-8 that I trust them at this point with the, the sequel trilogy when it comes to the, the cute comedic relief characters. Because BB-8 was awesome in Force Awakens. Yeah, BB-8 was, but you you fucking... Again, the taste is still in my mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to finish the sentence. From Jar Jar Banks. Yeah, you know what I mean? but these, it's, it's a different era, Nick. It is a different era, but it's the same motivations, right? They were like, we need... So was BB-8. We need a character in there that little kids can identify with, like, that laugh at, right? Because this has to be for all ages. And I'm like, but you're just... You're underestimating children. Children will think this is fucking cool no matter what. Because there's lots of colors and lights and lightsabers and coolness and chips and space and other things like that, right? Do we need... Because I'm just being selfish right now. I don't want this one stupid character in there that's gonna like ruin the fucking mood for me, right? Calling it right now because it was the one thing that got an audible reaction out of you in this trailer was that little fucker. Yeah. Calling it right now, the porg gonna be one of Nick's favorite things about the goddamn movie. <laughs> Flip flop for Nick. Bro, I got chills in that that first scene when the the lightsaber turns on in that girl's hands, the white lightsaber. Holy shit, man! That doom made me feel good. <laughs> cool Greg gets cool this. Uh, this one gets a pass. It's lit. This gets a pass. It's fucking lit. Um, all right, let's move on to the next news story. Squat, uh, squat high, squat high, squatty says Nick is right. Everyone, let him know. Okay, everyone, let Nick know. No, He's right. I'm right. Uh, Madav Seven says Nick is such a grumpy old man. I'm not a grumpy old man. I just you all you fucking young kids out there that weren't even born when I was waiting in line for the Phantom Menace, and then we get to the stupid Jar Jar Bing people. People, they're called know, Gungans, Nick. No, they're not called anything. Because I'm gonna, if it's my job in life is to wipe them from the fucking records, the annals of Star Wars history, right? Mm -hmm. No, they really lie on your list. As far as like the keeper, what yeah. I keep, I'm the keeper of exactly 17 things. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, Blade Runner 2049 was in fact a great movie. Mm -hmm. It's true. Number two, The Departed was in fact not a great movie. Okay, mm -hmm. three and four, those are open still. Okay, five. These stupid penguin things? Borgs. I'm calling it right now. Borgs? Porks? Porgs. Stupid. Uh -huh. Stupid and, and nonsensical. They're going to ruin the movie. I'm calling that right now. I'm sticking by that. Okay. Until I watch the movie. Someone clip it out for the future. Sticking by it. I'm calling it Porgs right now. Porgs are going to ruin episode They're going to be the worst part of the movie. They're going to be the part that everyone goes, would have been a great movie except for the stupid porks. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that I'll stick by this or my name is not Nick Scarpino, right? Okay. Okay. We'll things. see. Okay. Uh, the other slots are open, and I can't remember what we were just, oh, and Jar Jar Binks, number 17, as God is my witness, I will wipe Jar Jar Binks from the annals of the history of Star Wars, okay? By the time I'm dead, no one will remember Jar Jar Binks. Really? Take that to the bank. <laughs> Take it to the bank. Take it to the Take bank. Take it to the bank. 17 things, Nick is a... Let me see a picture of these porks. Keep her up. <laughs> Can you Google porks, Greg? <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna flip flop so hard on this. <laughs> you gotta flip flop. Jesus Christ, so that's hard cute on these motherfuckers. Um, all right, let's. Yeah, there we go. Can you hit, just hit images? Yeah, they're. I mean, they're kind of terrifying. Pull them up. So. There we go. Yeah, you're gonna flip flop. I don't like all the images of them like shrugging. What's up with that? Where are they shrugging? Like. I don't see them shrugging. That one. Oh. I don't know if that's shrugging as much as it's just kind of like... It looks like, like, are you not entertained sort of thing? Mm, mm. Or like, what's up? He's like, calling you on. He's like, come at me, bro. What you got? Fucking come at me. All right, let's get to the next news story. Sounds this comes good. from IGN.com. Never heard of Tamagashi, it. Tamagotchi, 20th anniversary line announced. Ooh. 
It's time to hatch, feed, and clean up after your virtual pets yet again. Tamagotchi's back in honor of the toy's 20th anniversary. Ben America has officially announced that a new set of Tamagotchi toys, smaller at about 60% the size of toys you may remember playing with in the 90s, will be available in limited qualities. You mean quantities there. On November 5th for $14.99. No, I, I think they were right. Qualities. Yeah, limited, <laughs> limited quality. It's not going to be it's just a money grab. Um, so yeah, anyway, cool. It's coming back. How uh, many you Tamagotchis were you back in the day? So they were too expensive for me. So I didn't ever these actually are, But I'm saying these are the things that like you have to feed them and shit yeah, and take care of. Like exactly. Digital pet, we got a pro right? Tamagotchi oh, yeah. I'm enthusiast on. coming here. She's not even, she's like, I'm coming on for this Well, one. the thing was, so there was Tamagotchis, and not that they were for girls, but there was Digimon. Yeah. Let's get it. Which well, were like four boys in there the was very. Thing too. There was like Giga Pets? Was that Well, Giga Pets came later. Okay. But like Tamagotchi was the one that like started off. But Bandai also had Digimon. That's what started the Digimon anime and all that Got shit. Got it. That makes sense. Um, so I was it definitely into that, that shit because then you get to fight motherfuckers. Yeah. Tamagotchi. This, this is just like babysitting. Exactly. And when I eventually, someone gave me one, I was not having it. I didn't understand it. My fucking thing kept dying. And I was like, I don't even care. Yeah. No, Tamagotchis were super big. My dad was doing a lot of work in Japan at the time. So he brought me one back from Japan. Japan, and I was like, oh, I'm the coolest person in the world yeah. right now. You got and one so of them, like, the gotchis. I had a hot pink one, and I was got like, the this is the shit. And then they got banned from school. It happens. And then I was like, mom, you have to babysit my Tamagotchi while I'm at school. And still to this day, she's like, that was the most traumatic thing you ever did because like it was stressful. Like, yeah. I didn't want it to die while you were at school. Like you come home bad. and the thing's dead, yeah. you would have been devastated. What if you came home and the so whole mad. thing was just smashed? She's like, I can't tell you what happened. <laughs> I can't tell that you what happened. My mom but well, everyone called my parents Mr. and Mrs. Tamagotchi because they can never say my last name. Because your last name's Takagami. 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 Very, very close, yeah, but different. I remember, though, there was girls in my elementary school, and they would have keychains mm -hmm. filled with these motherfuckers. Like, they'd have, like, 15 on one keychain. They were responsible for 15 kids. I can't. I'm, I'm barely See, I grew up in a different era where most of the girls in my high school had real kids. <laughs> Same here. Yeah, that was, uh, that's where I grew up. Most of, yeah. most, of me, most of the girls in my high school did not graduate high school because they were too busy being uh, mothers. Real mothers. Yeah, boys. yeah. About maybe like eight years ago, my ex-girlfriend decided it would be a good idea to go on eBay and buy us both Tamagotchis. And she's like, oh, let's take care of these. My shit died. Two days. Couldn't even fuck with it. I, I just don't get it. Did I don't get, get these did things. Did you ever do the take the egg home thing? No. No? That wasn't a real thing in San Francisco. Uh, Did you? No. Yeah. Just Did you, Nick? That seems like a Nick era thing. Wait, I'm sorry. I was in the comments. Take the egg we have home. to take the home. The I egg. did have to take the egg home, yeah. yeah. I, d I had to do the egg, like, baby thing. Uh, I think I had. Did I have. Sh no, I think it was an egg, yeah. But I mean, that was it was for like a week. And you just. I made a little cradle for it that was sat on my chest out of, like, like fabric. And I just kind of kept it. But then the other thing was also, like, if it cracked, it's a fucking egg. You just put another one in there. You get no, man, they have, what. like, scientific holograms that they can tell with, who is the eggs or the real eggs. <laughs> nah, man. I grew up in an era where they called them STDs, not STIs. They don't call them that anymore, apparently. Actually, I don't even call them STIs anymore. I think there's some other name for them. But I grew up, they just didn't give a fuck. Like, health, health, like, uh, uh, what was it, sex ed was, like, half an hour. Where they were like, all you motherfuckers already fucked this up. You already fucked it up. Half of you were pregnant already. Why are we even bothering? <laughs> why are we even bothering telling you? Riverside, California. You already fucked this up. Y'all yeah, fucked it up already. Obviously, clearly you know how uh, uh, sex the works, The reproductive man. organs You're work. You're already nine months pregnant at 15. Uh, cool, Greg, next story, please. This comes from Variety. Sylvester Stallone directing, producing Creed 2, starring Michael B. Jordan. I agree with this. This is a great call. Sylvester Stallone has announced that he will direct and produce Creed 2 as a sequel to the 2015 boxing drama starring Stallone and Michael B. Jordan. On Monday, Stallone posted a still of himself and Jordan posing together on his Instagram account with the caption, looking forward to directing and producing the incredibly talented Michael B. Jordan in Creed 2 next year. One more round, and the hashtags... Hashtag Creed 2, hashtag MGM, hashtag fighting, hashtag workout, hashtag exercise, and hashtag boxing. You can scroll down a little bit, Greg. Yeah. You can see the picture of them standing next to each other. And there we go. I love Michael B. Jordan. I love, I love everything about this. I love that someone somewhere, and I, and I, and I really credit this with uh, uh, Coogler, the director of the first one, right, oh, Coogler? okay. Yeah. 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 For pitching this and actually getting it through, because he was one of the reasons Creed happened. People were like, oh, he did, you know, he did Fruitvale Station, and then people were like, what would you want to do? And he's like, well, I would always love to, I would love to do the Rocky movie, but just do it 
from like Creed's perspective, like his yeah. son's perspective. And they were like, we can get you in a room with Sylvester Stallone. And he's like, okay. And he pitched it to him and he went for it. And then fucking made it happen, man. I love when Hollywood goes, you know what? That would be a cool idea. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's instead of going, you know what? That would be a cool idea. But instead of doing that, let's do a derivative film, some piece of shit piece sequel of shit. or whatever, or remake or whatever, or Daddy's Home 2. It's all fun and games, but I'm waiting for Assassin's Creed 2, the movie. Assassin's Creed 2? Did Bring you back watch? Benedict Cumberbatch. What was his name? Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. Cumberbatch. Same. They're pretty much the same human yeah. being. <laughs> Did you watch? Assassin's Creed, the movie? No, it's don't. on HBO right now. Really? I can't bring myself Just to click on it. Don't fucking Let's do it. Oh, no, no, no. Don't. Don't. Let's have a movie night. You want to do a watch along? Yeah. Of Assassin's Creed 2? Yeah, no. Man. Or no. 1? I think we're going to get about 15 minutes in and be like, God, oh, we should have bought more booze. Dude, Fastbender's body will be worth it, dude. Fastbender has a. He's so beautiful. Yeah. He is very beautiful. Mm hmm. Um, that's just one of those movies that I'm like, oh, this could be cool, and then the reviews came out, and you're like, nah, that's exactly what we wanted. Did you think it could be cool? At what moment did you think it could have been cool? I watched the first trailer for it, and I was like, okay. Really? Like, this could potentially be a fun movie. Oh my god, the trailers looked bad for a second. Well, see, that's, I I look at the trailers for Tomb Raider, and I'm like, this doesn't look that good either. Well, but that's different, though, because, like, no one thinks they look good. But I mean, they're on the same level for me, like, is what I'm mm. saying. So I watched the Tomb Raider show, I'm like, there are parts in this that I'm like, okay. Like, the part with the, where the thing's rolling over, I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of fun. Like, maybe that's, that's Tomb Raider-esque. Yeah. I'll go see this movie, maybe. And there was a couple parts in the Assassin's Creed trailer, I was like, okay. Like, a fast bender, you got Marion, what's his name, Cotillard. I was like, okay, yeah. cool cast. But then I started seeing more and more of it, and I'm like, oh. The fact My, that it was Marion Cotillard and, like, Cumberbatch, I was like, this is going to be a good Again, movie. not Cumberbatch. What? Cumberbatch, <laughs> Doctor Strange is Cumberbatch. Right. Yeah. So Cotillard and, like, Benedict, like, this is going to be a good movie. This I don't, I don't like that you're messing with me. You know this pisses me off. Off. Not all British people are the same people. Yeah. Actually, I don't think Fastbender's British. I think he's like think he's German. German. Yeah. The thing with, with Tomb Raider is, to me, it looks exactly like the story from the game translated into a movie. Yeah. So I'm like, they're succeeding at that. And it is people Tomb have Raider. played that for that that game where they uh, the well, not the second one just came out right, but the first one, the first Tomb Raider that just came out when they kind of the rebooted reboot. the franchise. Yeah. That's the look and the feel they're going for, it, which I think is it. super smart, yeah. and I think it's going to translate very very well at least to. To um, mainstream audiences because it's not hypersexualizing Laura. It's actually painting her as a real cool action hero. Mm. So I think that'll be good. I think it's a nice dichot, like a nice uh, difference to draw between the original Tomb Raider. Like I don't think it was gonna. Yeah, I don't really, think this movie does well. I think it Tomb does. Raider? You don't think it does well? No, no, no. I, I mean, I think. I don't have a good feeling about it. It's too. I think way. honestly, I think it's too faithful of a video game adaptation that it's not gonna work. Whereas Assassin's Creed was like they were trying to make that a blockbuster, and then that didn't work either. They should just stop with a lot of this stuff. You know stuff. when they nailed it? Mm. Prince of Persia. That's uh, not true, in fact. They nailed actually. That Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. Did you play the games? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I played... The only Prince of Persia games... Oh, that's not true. I played I played a little bit of, uh, I think, one that was on 360. Sands of Time, probably. Yeah, it was fun. Well, that was the gen before. I just remember jumping the around constantly, and you had to yeah. like, always jump around. It was, and I was like, this yeah, is cool. Yeah, you did. No, I mean, the Prince of Persia games are my favorite of And then, of course, of I played time. the original Prince of Persia, where you had to like back up and 2D and like jump, oh my God, and you could never so make hard. the fucking jump. Last year, ever. or last week, was the... like. 38th anniversary of that game. Really? Which is insane. Um, but yeah, no, the, the Prince of Persia movie, I was so excited for because it was fresh off of Pirates of the Caribbean. And it was right. Jerry uh, Bruckheimer or whatever. And I was like, all right, all right. And then they had uh, Jake she, Gyllenhaal as the Prince. And Gemma Arterton. And I fucking love her. And I'm like, I, you know what? I'm not against this. And then I saw it. I'm like, I'm against this. Stop. <laughs> Please. Like that was and I think, what's his name? Ben Kingsley was in it too. Yeah, he was. God, it was a fucking, as yeah, the, the think, sultan. Yeah, I think she was in Prince of Persia. Man, she was, she was it for a second. She was it for a second. Um, can you pull up the tips? Yeah, sure. Uh, two tips today. One from Pistol Play says, Nick, I watched Blade Runner, the final cut, and went to see Blade Runner 2049 IMAX at the theater based on your recommendation. It was an amazing experience. Do you love me now? Um, yes, I do. But only for today. You have to prove yourself again to me tomorrow. By killing Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Just I like how you're on it now. I am Max Cannon. and has given us a tip and said, hey Nick, hey Tim and Nick, a buddy and I uh, had a successful pitch for PlayStation and our comedy show Made in Boise is going to going into production for PlayStation. Hey! Yay. Hey, fucking hey man, congratulations. He gave us a link there. Let's check out that link. Look at you fucking guys. Fuck yeah, man. Good for it's you so guys. It's so cool PlayStation does this too. The Emerging Filmmakers Program. That's phenomenal. They're great. Congratulations. Keep us posted on that because this looks like a great project. Uh, and Alex Aziz, our friend Alex Aziz, says, Cumberpatch 
is the peg wigging, peg wing guy, right? I hate you. <laughs> Move out of Texas for once in your fucking life, okay? I live somewhere else. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Now it's time for P.S. I love this best friend, XO. Oh, we're not going to read this Bill and Ted story? Do you, do you want you, to? Sir. It's not much of a story. Let's, read, story? let's read the story. I was just watching Pogus' Journey last night. I know. That the only reason I even put this in here is because you've been talking about Bill and Ted. This is from Slash Film. Bill and Ted 3 gets an appropriately rocking title, Bill and Ted Face the Music. That's terrible. It's a cautionary tale. They're supposed to save the world, but when we see them, they haven't saved the world, and they're married and have kids, and they're playing to nobody. But they have to write the song and face the music. Hopefully, we'll make it before I'm 60. So that was uh, Keanu Reeves. He goes on to say, the future comes back and says... If you don't write the song by this certain time, the universe is going to unravel and history and everything is going to change and dinosaurs are going to walk the earth. Jesus is playing basketball. All sorts of weird things start unraveling and wormholes are twisting. We have to kind of bring order back and it's connected into bringing our families together by writing a song. Great. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in too. I hope this happens. Why not? It's a <laughs> Just because like, idea. fuck it. Why not? It's a terrible idea, but let's do it. Why not? Let's have some fun with it, people. So now it's time for BSL of this best friend, XO. So you can go to kindoffunny.com slash best friend, just like Jeremy Botts did to shout out a best friend doing some cool shit. Jeremy shouting out Jenny Weinman. Yeah, hey, what up, Jenny? During the Houston flood, she posts on Facebook that any best friends in Houston were in need of anything to let her know, including a place to stay. She's really personifying the best friend moniker. Thank you to Jenny for making the community proud. Stay safe, best friends. Absolutely. Shout out to Jenny. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now it's time for the giveaway. Nick, how can people win a game each there and every day? exactly four ways to win. One, you can be in the Twitch chat right now. Don't spam it, or the same person responsible for killing Jar Jar will come to your house. Okay? So just be cool, S.A. Be cool. Also, if you want another chance to win, you can subscribe to us. Now, what does subscribing get? Well, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You get private chat time with us. Right? Just you and me. One-on-one, -on -one, mono -on mono with the rest of the subscribers. Uh, you get cool emotes. You get to play games with us when we play games on Twitch, like Friday the 13th and all sorts of other games that I'm sure we'll play leading up to Halloween that we don't have any plans to play right now. Or maybe we do because I don't pay attention in meetings. Uh, three, you can go to youtube.com slash kind of, excuse me, kind of funny dot Patreon.com slash kind of funny mm -hmm. or Patreon.com slash kind of funny games and be a subscriber to us over on those lovely platforms. For the $2 or above level, we got lots of crazy shit going on over there. You get exclusive access to all of our content, including a week. Uh, you get Party Mode a week early. You get um, GOG. You get to watch GOG live with us today, which, by the way, we're doing today. I oh, should yeah. Mention. There is a GOG today. There is a GOG today. 3 p.m.-ish. It's going to be fantastic. Joey's going to put the time in. I don't Joey's going to put the time in. We don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, just follow Joey on. You know, Joey's kind of the keeper of all things in our, in our lives, which is nice now. Um, and of course, those are your four ways to win. Uh, I recommend being a subscriber because it really helps us out, and I appreciate that. And if you have Amazon Prime, you get one free Twitch Prime subscription. We'd like it to go to us, but if not, give it to someone because otherwise it goes to waste. Tim. Yes. Who are the winners today? Today, the winner is... Reborn931 from the Twitch chat. They won in versus Deluxe on Xbox One. Bow, 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 bow. Congratulations to you, my friend. There it is. And now it's time for the old Moriarty 3 and 3. Richard Draken says, how many gogs do you guys have banked? 37. Hello, dude. 37 We're so gogs. ahead. It's crazy. We don't need to do a podcast at all in 2018. <laughs> That's how many we have. And we're just going to keep going. They're the so promise. good, We though. keep having awesome guests come on. Um... And they're just, they're, they're, they, we just keep making fucking great content. They're actually, like, they're really fun to make, it turns out. Yeah, yeah. turns out. <laughs> turns out they're really fun to just sit with your friends and talk for fucking three hours and get hammered. So, yeah, we got plenty of those. Reborn931, the winner just said let's him host. I appreciate that. That's why you're a winner. Ka choo, ka choo. Ka choo, ka choo. I think I'm losing my hair more. I think I ripped some hair out last night during jiu jitsu. Jiu jitsu. You gotta, sometimes you gotta talk. Like, I spend an exorbitant amount of time now around Brazilian people. And they have the best accent ever. My jujits is good. Jujits. My jujits. Jujits is about. It's so fun. You strike me more of a capoeira kind of guy. He says, as he giggles to himself. My brother did? just made he himself like, laugh. He was like, you strike me as a capoeira kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love you, Cool Greg. Oh, by the way, Cool Greg, my gig tonight that I wanted you to come with me, is, it's canceled because right. all, all of Napa's on fire. So yeah. they had to cancel it for safety reasons. By the way, if you're in Napa, uh, still, I know it's a pain in the ass. Just be safe. Be safe. Mr. Yasman apparently gave us a tip and said, Nick, have you read my tip? No, I did not. Hold on. I didn't see it come through, bud. Maybe it came through earlier. Nope. I see it. Do you see it? Yeah. 
refresh. Hold on, refreshing. The tip, that is tip yesterday. Oh, oh that's we weird. Go. It didn't come that in. That is weird. It came in in between two. That's why, guys, I was wrong. The Rock confirmed the spinoff, not the title. I thought it was a pick of the word Hobbs, but it turned out to be a video clip. P.S. The Rock used the hashtag. C and O oh, candy asses need not apply. So I guess it's not. And. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's, I thought it was C Andy. I love you so much sometimes. You know man. what? You know what? Um, Axel 360XX says, Tim, have you given up on getting Fran on The Bachelor? Uh, it's not so much that I've given up as much as I've learned how hard it is to actually get on the show. Yeah. Um, so Apparently they don't for like now the dream's over. popular people being on their shows. Yeah, people it's an issue. Followings. It's an issue. Although, Nick, there's this show called Burning Love. Yeah. Have you heard of it? I think you've talked to me about it. It is a show that ran on E. Okay. And it's straight up just a Bachelor parody show. Sure. But they take it super seriously. Good. And they do the whole fucking season of it. The, uh, the host is Michael Ian Black. Oh, and lovely. every contestant is like every comedian you ever know. Ben Stiller's in it. Um, the entire cast of Silicon Valley is in it. That's awesome. And uh, Kristen... Um, Kristen Wiig? Yeah, Kristen Wiig's in it. Yeah. No, wait, no. Kristen Bell, Bell is in it. Yeah, uh, and it's just fucking. It's amazing. It's I'll tell you so one thing funny. about Kristen Bell that I respect. Yeah, still married to Dax Sherman, mm -hmm. right? Shepard, Dax Shepard, right? Watched Chips. Yeah, the other did. day on the plane. Uh huh. Man, he owes her a favor for being in that movie. Tell you that right now. Yeah, he owes her a big favor for being in that movie. It was a bad movie. It was hard to get through. I didn't watch it, but I did watch it on someone else's screen on the plane. And it didn't look There's good. There's a lot going on in that movie. A lot wrong with it. Uh, let's go into subscriber-only mode. The chosen few will now be, get a chance to speak with us. Everyone else will be silenced. Have you guys seen Big Mouth on Netflix? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, B Silver 87 says, speaking of TV shows, Big Mouth on Netflix is amazing. It has ton tons of SNL cast members. Y'all need to watch it. Mm, interesting. Have you watched it, Cool Greg? Yeah, I finished it the day it came out. Just had to put it on and had it going. It's a little too themed for me because it's like that Family Guy kind of raunchy or whatever, you know. And it's a little too focused on puberty, but it's good. It's fun. Okay, cool. But like every episode is really about puberty and all that. Richard Draken again gives us a comment. And says Nick and Tim, have you rewatched The Force Awakens recently? Do you do you think it holds up post release hype? Yes, yeah. uh, I haven't seen it too recently, but I do think it. it I watched definitely it about a year up. ago. Made yeah, cry again. So yeah, I think it does. Titan Major says, "Give me Friday the 13th. Tweet at Greg. Tell him you want to play with him. Zyger says, "Big Mouth is kind of dumb." You know what, Zyger? I don't know if you're right or not. I haven't watched it, <laughs> but I am the keeper of 17 things. Number five is whether or not Big Mouth is dumb. Okay. Uh, Lexi Gunner says, "Nick has the Jackman off going." Terribly. Terribly. I haven't talked to Darren in forever. I'm still in it. I, in my brain, I'm still competing, but I went on break for two weeks and completely undid all of the hard work that I had done going into that. And so now I feel like a fat pud. And I'm desperately fat trying pud. to get back to where I was prior and push forward. I think November, I'm going to have to go really hard on the diet. Um, and that I'm not looking forward to because if, Tim, as you know, the one, the two months that you should probably not start a very strict diet on are November and December. Yeah. Largely because there's a little hot. A lot of people in, in Canada are like, oh, we don't have, we don't have a Canadian Thanksgiving in November. Ours is Nothing stupid to be thankful in for. October. Um, in November we have Thanksgiving, right? Which is the Thanksgiving, okay? And it is the time when all Americans decide to take a week off and eat as much fucking food as humanly possible. No reason. We just do it. We're thankful, so what we do is, to be thankful, we put all of our money back into the economy, and in return, we get a shit heaping ton of pumpkin pie, which I proceed to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now some ask, hey Nick, do you eat it as a dessert after breakfast? No sir, I wake up and I cut a piece of pumpkin pie off the next day, after Thanksgiving, and I eat it like it's a piece of pizza for breakfast. Hell yeah, man. Then I might eat eggs, and then I might go back to eat pumpkin pie. I fucking feel you, dude. I put on like six pounds last Thanksgiving. And then I was like, it's okay. I got three weeks before Christmas to take this shit off. I didn't take it off. My prediction is I'm going to look like Hugh Jackman by <laughs> January 5th. But in reality, I'm going to look like a fatter version of the person you're looking at right now by January 5th. <laughs> Somewhere in between is where I think you'll be. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into sub-only chat. Can you do that for me? Uh, we're already in sub-only chat. Oh, okay. These are all the subs. B 
Bear eight zero says pumpkin pie and copy is the fucking best. It is. I agree. Oh, I can get that. Uh, I can get that. How about some blackberry pie? Uh, that's Greg. That's all for Greg. If, if Give Greg, Greg the blackberries. It. Shrub Tim says, don't lie, Nick. We know you just drink slowly melting ice through a straw for breakfast. Drinking slowly melting ice through a straw is one of Nick's specialties. It wouldn't be if we somehow figured out how to get me a never-ending supply of venti iced coffees from, from Starbucks. The problem is I don't want this ice. I want there to be coffee in this so I can slowly sip that and get jacked up on, uh, on iced coffee, but it's not, gonna, it's not in the cards. Windex Drawn says, Tim, party mode schedule update. So here's the thing, going forward, we had it that uh, Patreon users only got party mode a day early. Mm -hmm. We're now changing it so it's in line with our other things where you get it a week, a week early, early, which means that the Friday, Andy. Candy. Hey, come here, Andy. Friday the 13th Let's Play is going live tomorrow on Patreon, correct? Tomorrow on Patreon. So tomorrow on Patreon, for the $1 and above users on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, the Friday the 13th Let's Play oh will God, go live. I can't wait. I we can't have wait. four it's so good. horror games or like <laughs> scary, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> scary the themed games coming up. The first one we played was scary. Fuck the one we played yesterday. Yeah. Fuck that so one. I can say right the order, right? I don't know the exact order, but the games are Friday the Thirteenth. You like that good. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Right. Like Friday the Thirteenth. We played two matches of that, so that'll, that'll be two. Yeah, two videos. Friday the Thirteenth videos. Um, we played Slender: The Arrival. The original. No. Oh, the eight pages. No, just Slender: The Eight Pages. And then uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. So you're going to be getting all those week to week. So there will not be a party mode on YouTube. Uh, going live for everyone this week, but starting next week, we'll then be back in that. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying. Should we call all of these Let's Plays special Let's Plays? Should we name them something cool like Spooky Sundays? No, nobody is... You're, you are alone on this. You are the sole captain. Ooh. From here on out, Spooky Sundays. party mode schedule will be Wednesdays at 9 a.m., both a week early on Patreon and a week late. But YouTube. if you choose to watch the Halloween themed episodes on Sundays, please tweet at me and say, Nick, it's spooky Sunday time. I'm watching this on a Sunday with my wife and or my friend, Bill. You got a friend named Bill, right? Everyone's got a friend named Bill. That's William. True. Hey, did you Tell see that Ryan responded yesterday on Did Ryan Reddit? respond yesterday? Yeah, yeah, Ryan was Good. like, oh, thanks for the shout out, yeah, Nick. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that's So if you fun. have a friend named Bill, tell him we're talking about him today. Share this podcast with him. Share this video with him. Be like, Bill, go over, subscribe, to youtube.com slash kind of funny. They're great guys. They're super great guys. They're doing a live podcast today, right? It's gonna be awesome. Probably two o'clock or three o'clock, depending on when we get back from lunch. It's gonna be phenomenal. If you guys wanna watch that live, go over to Patreon and support us. One Until dollar. next time, I love you. We'll see you later. Get ready for Kind of Funny Games Daily with the return of Greg Miller and Andrea Renee. Renee Jekyll.